Good morning. Did you have a good week in the Lord? I said, did you have a good week in the Lord? Y'all's week must have went like mine did. John said it, it went exactly as the Lord would have it go. And, uh, oh, Elijah, good to see you, brother. We've missed you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean to embarrass you, but now it's good to see all y'all. Sister Kim, Sissy. I was bemoaning the fact a while ago that Keely will be gone in 40 days. Susan said, you're going to make me cry. Hush. So, you'll make me cry too. Time grows short at times, don't it? Brother was he praying. He says, I come to the end of this life. Come to the end of this life. And then he prayed that we'd bow to the circumstances as Jesus did. He done preached us a message there. I told him he was ready to go. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then Donald gets up here and asks, what, what are Christians? And uh, what are Christians? Yeah. Yeah. We're in Second Samuel chapter 23. Last time I spoke to you, we talked about in verse 2 here where it said that the Spirit of the Lord was in David's tongue. A deep challenge there. Let's read these first three verses again. Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of God of Jacob, the sweet psalmist of Israel, said, the Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, and the rock of Israel spake to me, He that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. It's interesting here, as I, we spoke last time about, whose word is in our tongue? Whose word is in our tongue? Mine's in mine 90% of the time. What makes us a Christian, as he said? Whose word should be in our tongue? You know, Peter, even though he was not where he should be at that time around that fire, his speech betrayed him. I hope even that when I'm not where I'm supposed to be, my speech will betray me. I would like to think it would. He done been with Jesus so much that word was in his tongue. See, David pivots here from verse 2 to verse 3, because he said the Lord spake by him. But then in verse 3 it says what? The Lord spake to him. In completing our thought about whose word is on our tongue, in order for that word to be on our tongue, they've got to speak to us, don't they? The brother was talking about this morning when we got here, about our conversation early in the morning. Sister Susan was talking about getting up and being prepared by talking to God before the day hits. Sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care. Nowadays it's sweet minute if I've got it. It's a... Uh, as it's been said from here, if the Lord can't make me bad, He'll make me busy. So in order for David to speak for the Lord, he had to speak to him, didn't he? And the Lord had to speak to him. Is your conversation one-sided? If I'm going to get up here and speak on somebody's behalf, I better know them. If I'm going to get up here and speak about this, I better know it. I better have read it. Listen, we have His Word here to speak to us. And our prayers should be speaking back to Him. About a year ago, I, get, I walk every day. I walk for about 30, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour if i got time. And my, I was passing my neighbor 
when I was walking. And he's retired. He finally said, Clay, if you'll text me when you're walking, I'll, when you go to leave, I'll come out and walk with you. He's pretty flexible, not doing nothing. So, one of them retired people, you know how they are. So, I started, I, t I just took him up on it one day, and we started walking, and now we walk every day. And you know what? I know a lot about him from just 30 minutes a day. It has completely changed the dynamic of our relationship where he's no longer just a neighbor, he's now a friend. Can you give him 30 minutes a day? Listen, his word is never going to be in our tongue if we don't allow him to speak to us. If I don't have time for him to speak to me, and listen, my prayer back, prayer is about getting to know God and, and finding out what he's up to. We want to, we want to approach God with our Christmas list. And I'm, I was guilty of this for years. I told y'all, I have backed way off on asking God for things because I'll get it. I'm serious. We ought to approach prayer like that. We should be careful. Be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. But if I'm going to speak on His behalf and His Word's going to be in my tongue, I've got to get to know Him. My wife could speak on my behalf after 30 years of marriage. Now, I'm not allowed to speak on her behalf, okay? Let's be clear. Can we speak as a Christian with authority and with confidence? Or is this just something we do on Sunday morning? Do we talk with him through the way? And he walks with me and he talks with me. Do we go to the garden alone? Enter that prayer closet and have that conversation so that we can come out and speak on his behalf. Listen, we're commanded to. I can get up here and I can tell you, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now how do I know that? How do I know Galatians 6 too? I spent some time conversing with him. David, the sweet psalmist, in Psalm 51, what did he say? Don't you think about this. He said, sacrifice and burnt offering, I would give it, but that's not your desire. Your desire is what? Yeah. A broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. Now, how did David know that? How did David know God did not want a burnt offering or a sacrifice? How did he know what God wanted? How do I know what my wife wants? How do you know what your friends want? Folks, this is, this is about getting to know God so that His Word will be on our tongue. In our tongue, not on our tongue. So I can speak on His behalf. I can act like a Christian. My speech will betray me if I have been with Him. And by the way, if you haven't been with Him, your speech will betray you. Yeah. As mine most often does. Holy cow. This is deep and tall, and it's a tall order to get to know our Savior such. That His words would be in my tongue. Because he has spake to me. A lot of times we, we picture this relationship as being one sided. And, and I had put that barrier up there for years, Donald, because I didn't get what I wanted. Prayer was about me getting what I wanted. Instead of entering his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, so that I would know what God wanted, that I would know God wanted a broken heart and a contrite heart and a broken spirit. So I could stand and speak with authority about what he wanted. So his words would be in my tongue. How well do we know our Brother Barrett, the first sermon I heard Brother Barrett preach, he said most Christians want to get saved and put that fire insurance plate on the wall, so to speak, certificate on the wall, that on this day I prayed this, but then they don't want to know nothing else about their Savior. And they sit here right here in the pews and reprobate out. That has stuck to me like glue, and I'm glad it has, because that was, the, that was the Spirit speaking to me, warning me, get to know your Savior, because there'll be a day when, listen, 
Find in here where Jesus, the words that Jesus spoke didn't benefit somebody. He bowed to the situation, the circumstances. When there was nothing good, at, when there was nothing good left to say to Pilate, did he say anything? Said he answered him, no more. In closing, let's go to Second Timothy chapter two. Listen, I want to challenge us to study this and to know more about our Savior. Know what He delights in. This is a familiar passage. Now, Mike, Mike likes to quote verse 26 where the devil takes us at will here, but we're going to back up to verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto who? Unto man. A lot of times we want to razzle and dazzle people with our tongue and show them what we know. Or a lot of times I like to even try to impress with what God has showed me. <laughs> yeah. I told y'all when I was over at John's the other day, Ben showed me that meme and I thought, well, they are listening. And then there's a little bit of pride welled up in me and the Holy Spirit said, hold it, hold it, hold it. I did that, not you. Just, and thank God it did. It cut me right back down to where I needed to be. Cut me off at the knees and left me standing. I well, thank God he was listening. What a blessing. I did take, the, I did take a blessing in it that the Lord has used me in, in some small form here. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will do what? Increase unto more ungodliness. Profane and vain, avoid them. Y'all see any vain and profane babblings going on nowadays? Just a little this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there wasn't much this week. We won't even... We won't even go there. <laughs> How well do we know our... Listen, when you, when you live with a person, you get to know them real well. You know, listen, that ought to be... We live daily with Jesus. Do we know Him that well? Do we know what He delights in us? I was over helping Donald and Wendy with their Wi-Fi. And Wendy was asking me about the password that was on it. She said, that's not Donald's, is it? I said, no, it's not. She said, I didn't think it was because it didn't say Chevrolet 454. <laughs> see, she knows you, brother. We ought to be like that. Listen, when we read or see, listen, we're bombarded with counterfeit religion today. And these little children are about to leave us. And it, it, it is frightful. But they're in God's hands. It's up to them to be obedient or disobedient. They've heard the truth. Yeah. We've done all we can do. We planted that seed. But if you've been with the real thing long enough, you'll spot a counterfeit. I think it's Revelation said if it were possible, even the very elect would be deceived, but they can't be. Listen, let's let His Word be in our tongue because we've spake with Him so much we talk like Him. I love you. May the Lord bless you this coming week.